We don't have the luxury of time. Well, you see, funny thing. <laughs> Everyone does. Uh, kind of, yeah. Ow! We literally. Say... Go ahead. We lit. We literally came here through a broke ass time machine. I think time is a luxury we might have. Oh, I was thinking about real life. I was like, oh. we all get time at the same amount at the same time. And then I thought, wait, wait, what if we don't? What if some people are in accelerated time and they don't know it? And the world's just normal to them because that's how they've always lived. How's your lock card? Thank you for the, uh, the bits. Or the I was about to say something really bad. <laughs> Do it. I was about to say accelerated time. That's just cancer patients. Well, no. Hmm. Well, I'm saying well, no, because that's not what I meant. But now I'm actually thinking about. I feel like a bird. I like yes. birds. I love birds. I've raised birds. My OC is based on a bird, uh huh. Oh, yeah. It's funny because Vegas, I have wings. Oh, well, it's funny because his last name is Phoenix. Yeah. Like, it's kind of hilarious. It's funny how... because his other last name is Fox. Yep. A lot of what, a lot of things I'm involved in as far as content creating involve animals. My username is based on the fox. I have an OC pony. Ow. And it's Whose name is based on a bird. Yeah. That is also a Greek legend. Is it a Greek legend? I thought it was an Egyptian myth. What, the phoenix? The yeah. Greek bird that blows yeah, I'm up? I'm American myth. Well, every culture has their own the mythology phoenix about is everything. The Greek bird that rises from its own ashes. Yeah. After becoming those ashes when it dies. The Greek bird. Is that Greek? The, I'm Ancient Greek, Greek folklore a phoenix is a long lived bird that regenerates, otherwise born again. Yeah, this says Greek. Hang on here. Okay. That's weird. Because when I spoke to Peter, he said that when it comes to the phoenix in. Uh, I think it's the Egyptian lore. Is that it's Hold supposed on. to resemble See. life. Is well, every culture is going to have something different. Is the Phoenix Egyptian? Phoenix. Well, yeah, Egyptian might have some. Might have already had something similar. I mean, like, lots of, uh, lots of countries that never associate with each other all made legends about dragons before they ever were able to communicate. Like how every religion has like a different deity. Okay, so apparently there's a Greek Phoenix and an Egyptian Phoenix. In ancient Egypt and the classical Egypt. antiquity, a fabulous bird associated with the worship of the sun. The Egyptian Phoenix was said to be as large as an eagle and brilliant scarlet and gold plumage and a melanin. Fuck, I'm not Melanotic. I like how the word specifically say Melodic? a fabulous bird. <laughs> So did the Egyptian legend give us the whole fire and sun association? Well, the sun association and the Greek legend gave us the rise from the ashes association? Oh no, this- okay, I found something. The Greek phoenix is commonly traced back to the Egyptian deity Bennu. The creature called Bennu was known to be a bird that was similar to a heron. Bennu was said to have lived on harem. top of- Harem. <laughs> said to live- <laughs> Full circle. Said oh, to have lived that on all top makes of sense. Stone. <laughs> Said to have lived on top of stones and obelisks, and was worshipped by the people of ancient Egypt, similar to the way in which Osiris and Ra were worshipped. So, the Greek phoenixes might be related <laughs> to some. God damn it, Greek Robin! Greek phoenix. Hi, it's our menu. Egyptian. Yeah. It phoenix, is. harem, golden fox. Yes, it all fits together. Well, <laughs> oh, you see, it's funny because, that is yeah. that is too coincidental when you use that term. But then again, the <laughs> word harem means multiple things. Like nowadays, people refer yeah. to harem as uh, in anime that you have to have a series of girls. <laughs> a collection of females. It wasn't harem. It's heron. Her oh, a heron. Uh, yeah. It's a bird. It's we a crane-like bird. Good. Yes. Heron. Uh, heron bird. Heron. 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 It's a crane-like bird. Yes. But harem fits better. Okay. Probably. We want it to work, therefore it does. Yeah. Because we have nothing else better to do than to have a- OW! Fucker. 
than to have a, so, you know, a bit of a dirty mind. So if Goldblaze Phoenix was truly Egyptian, he'd be Goldblaze Benu. Well, he's not really Egyptian. The whole, the whole Phoenix uh, idea, or like people like refer to my OC as being uh, a Phoenix pony, which that's it's a bizarre idea, but it sounds cool. Yeah, um, because yeah, it does sound Phoenix cool. For a cutie mark. So yeah, it, yeah, like it was all just like unintentional. Yeah, it was all unintentionally like that. Uh, when I was putting together my pony OC, I wanted to be based on an eagle, and I wanted to use a Latin word, which would be Aquila, because eagles are cool. But I also loved really bright colors, so I wanted to find something else involved in a bird, and it just so happens that Phoenix was the better choice. Ah. Yeah. Goldblaze Gold Quilla doesn't actually sound that bad. Cool. No, pretty cool name. <laughs> when I mean, did Miraculous Ladybug get brought up? I'm seeing it in the chat. No, yeah, there's probably a Ladybug debate going on. Okay, guys. Wait, are there new episodes out or something? I don't know. I think that Ladybug is a show that I really enjoy, but I will never interact with the fan community of because <laughs> no, I don't like it. I don't like shipping wars. Like in any fandom, I don't like shipping wars. And Ladybug fans, that's all they care about is shipping wars. Well, I mean, the show is like a big it's part 80% of it. It's percent shipping. Love triangle. The whole yeah. show is is shipping wars, but it's you know, making up new villains and love triangle. That's yeah. the whole show. At least, well, now there's the love like. Uh, quadrilateral or whatever. Yeah. Actually, I think it's like, what is it, like a love octagon at this point? I don't care. Oh. I, I don't know how <laughs> to date. But like, I didn't fall in love with Ladybug because, you know, weird, dumb, love whatever shape you want to make it. I like Ladybug because it's a really fun action cartoon that has yeah. a really cool world that I enjoy. I, yeah. I so enjoy the world of a superhero show that is so vastly different to our own. Because like a lot of superhero shows, it's like, what if our world, but superheroes, whereas that world is like, yeah, superheroes are a thing. They have insurance policy about them. It's like, yeah, that's something that should totally exist in more superhero shows. So, like, I love those Golden, little details. So Golden Logic and Master Code, Miraculous Ladybug is a show where um, these two main characters have a uh, magical I know what Miraculous Ladybug is. <laughs> oh, okay. I've watched the show, and it's done in CGI, and there's always a thing with me in shows that are done in CGI. Because I've been so used to the smooth nature of movies, I see how much more jaggedy and jolted their movement is, and it just feels weird to look at. Yeah, it's gotten a lot better over the course of the run. Uh, over the run, it's gotten a lot smoother. I feel like the first season is definitely kind of the jankiest and the most low budget, because it's always been a very low budget show, because TV animation is already oh something break wait what uh, uh i got a, i got the notification that somebody disconnected and i thought that i had disconnected uh yeah they're but dead, they're dead. it's it is still low budget but you know i think that the show has learned how to take advantage of its low budget nature has gotten a lot smoother in the last few years ow and yes, I did. I am a brony, and I avoid shipping wars because I didn't. Be, I didn't like MLP because ships. I liked it because oh, this is actually a really fun cartoon that I enjoy. Yeah. It's like I, I love Voltron, and I was so tired of Voltron shipping wars. Like Voltron is such a good show, and the fact that it, the fandom boiled down to who wanted which characters to fuck was driving me insane. It's like enjoy the fun. There's a, there's a giant robot powered by somebody's big dick energy. Like, come on. <laughs> you got a kick out of that one. <laughs> dick energy. Yeah, it, that's what that that whole season was just big dick energy. What what season? Uh, I can't remember what season of Ultron it was, but it's the one where uh, oh, Ultron. Shiro. I thought we were still talking yeah. about Friendship is Magic. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see Friendship is Magic with a robot powered by Big Dick Energy, but here we are. Well, there is the Transformers crossover that's coming out later this month. Yep. True. Yeah, I just. I, I'm I sorry, don't. That, that shit just sounds too fucking weird to work to me I mean like Transformers the comics have just decided to do as many dumb crossovers as they want and it's kind of hilarious ow like they did what was it they did uh, 
Transformers and Power Rangers was a crossover recently. Transformers and Alien have done a crossover. RoboCop, I think, recent, kind of recently. Did, I haven't Robocop, been reading the Transformers comic. RoboCop but, had a crossover between... Um, yeah, I had a crossover with Terminator. It was a game. Yeah, Ter Terminator and RoboCop. Yeah. What's the point in Transformers versus Aliens? I don't know, because... Aliens can't impregnate Transformers because they're <laughs> machines. Yes. So the Transformers are just going to win because they're 50 times the size of a typical alien. Listen, it's not about the why, it's about the why not. Because it's fucking dumb. <laughs> yes, that's why you do it. What about Power Rangers meets My Little Pony? That, I, I would actually see that as being a better crossover with uh, My Little Pony. Magical unicorns and big power robots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, okay, to be fair, the main characters of My Little Pony, I mean, they're basically Power Rangers. That's my dumb take for the day. Go, go, Pony Ranger. <sighs> like, Why are we... They have the moral equivalency. Oh my god, now I'm just- Okay, so you know the transformation sequence where everybody calls out their signs? Imagine that they all call out their elements of harmony. Yes! <laughs> Kindness! Fun. Laughter! Laughter! Honesty! <laughs> <laughs> Magic! Come on! Tell me you wouldn't- you wouldn't read that. That sounds hilarious. Uh, it would be so much easier for them to be cut off by their enemies, or there'd be a lot more, like, absence of suspension of disbelief where someone's just like why did why didn't Tarek just fucking blast them while they were saying that stupid shit and striking their dumbass poses uh because anime logic same reason but Me. like yeah I, i'm already sh hello hello hold on Ow! Piece of shit. But like, when it comes to weird comic crossovers, everyone who's like, oh, why are they doing this? It's like, come on, you guys, comic crossovers are dumb and stupid and you need to accept them. Archie is hung out with the Predator, okay? Nothing is weird anymore. Hold on, what? Have you never <laughs> heard of Archie meets the Predator? No, why the fuck does something like that exist? Tell us. Because Archie Comics is weird and dumb and great. Wait, is it treated for real or treated for laughs? For real. Archie, it's called Archie vs. the Predator. It's actually pretty so, good. Does the Predator actually, like, go around, like, brutally killing everybody? Uh, the, no, I don't remember in that in that one. And somebody will probably remind me that I'm an idiot uh, in the chat. But, uh, yeah, Archie, Archie crossovers are great. Like, here's the cover of Archie vs. Predator. Uh, but if you want one where Archie dies a lot, there is um, <laughs> af there is Afterlife with oh, Archie, which is Archie in a zombie one. story. <laughs> you guys do realize that predators just don't just go out and kill anything and everything, right? Ow! Yeah, it's hunting down Archie. Yeah. <laughs> Archie specifically. No, it's like when people say predators are known to kill, it's just like, well... Their whole thing is okay. they hunt uh, other combatants, or they hunt people because <laughs> they seek the thrill of a challenge. If you don't have a gun, they're probably not going to kill you. <laughs> I also just posted Archie meets Punisher, because that's also a real comic. Okay, exists. honestly, I could see that. <laughs> I, actually read a I actually read a bunch of Preds a lore recently. I found a bunch of interesting stuff. Because, like, normal predators either just said don't kill unarmed people and non-combatants. But then you have this other tribe of the predators called the Bad Bloods, and the reason they became the Bad Bloods is because they went around killing unarmed civilians and children. Nice. That's not very just nice. Because. And those bigger predators from the uh, Predators movie, the you know, even more freakier looking ones. Fucking... I can't remember yeah. if it's that they were mutants or they enhanced themselves. But yeah, there's loads of different kinds of predators. Yeah. 
But yeah, when it comes to like weird comic crossovers, nothing will ever surprise me anymore because Archie meets the Predator or Archie meets Glee or Archie meets the Punisher. Like, it's weird. Comics are dumb and stupid and weird and I love them. Also, random side note, how's this fucking... <laughs> I can't, I can't keep a straight face while talking about this stupid shit. How is... <laughs> it looks friend, great! How is friendship in disguise even gonna oh, work? Gone. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care how it's gonna work. I'm so excited. Maybe they can... Well, I'm happy you don't care. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Listen. Ah. Comics are fun. <laughs> I, I've never actually read the old school Transformers comics. Like, they always would transform into one thing. Like, Optimus is always a semi, right? He can never transform into anything else. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, oh. what, what if they turn into like robotic made large sizes of the main six? <laughs> also, Gentlemen. like, yeah, somebody in the chat Hello. is bringing up Phineas and Ferb, who's also had uh, like hi, the Peter. dumbest crossovers. Hey, Peter. Okay, what the hell's going? Hello, on? what are we talking about? I have uh, sushi a lot. I am That is cool. I have right sushi. I have a tu <gasps> It was like the Tokyo tuna thing, so I got like three different types of tuna. And I've got spicy mayo, and I've got uh, soy sauce infused this. I also have Lifesavers gummies and the Mountain Dew. I am having a happy <laughs> dinner night. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Peter, Peter, you have Mountain Dew? Yes. Is it cold? Yeah. Want to crack yeah. one open with the boys? Do it. Yeah, let's crack one open with the boys. Do it, Billy. Oh my god. <laughs> there it is. Peter opened a, a cold one. Or was it Rob? That was me. That was me. Okay. I cracked one open after, but I should point out, I have it in the bottle. So, uh, it doesn't really, like, crack, but I did do it. Mm. Pep Wait, Pepcoin by Pepsi. I don't know if that's a promotional thing, or if... Pepcoin is then literally trying to make cryptocurrency. I think it's a promotional be... thing. Ow. That would be so funny if Pepsi was making cryptocurrency. That would be much funnier, but like, it's not as good. Did you guys oh, ever sorry, hear about guys. the time? I'm so close to the mic, I just wanted everybody to hear uh, cracking up in the cold one with the boys. But uh, did you guys uh, hear about the time Pepsi had the sixth most powerful military on the planet, technically? Yeah, I remember that. What? <laughs> okay, let me tell you the story. Um, then leader of the Soviet Union, and then Vice President uh, Khrushchev and Nixon got into an argument over which was better, capitalism or communism. The CEO of Pepsi walks up and offers Khrushchev some a, drink, a glass of Pepsi, which they don't have in the Soviet Union. Um... Turns out Khrushchev really, really liked Pepsi. So, he arranged a deal <laughs> with PepsiCo. And at first, like, the problem with them, um, because because Marxism, the, the ruble was worthless outside of the Soviet Union. Because it had an arbitrary assigned value. So, it's literally just nothing but um, printed paper outside of it. So, they're like, okay, well, what are we going to use to pay for this? Well... For the first year of the contract, they just traded it for some previously Soviet-exclusive vodka that America really loved, and you can still buy today in any liquor store. But soon later, that contract ran out, and they wanted more Pepsi. So they're thinking, okay, well, what can we, what else can we trade? So they trade for like three billion tons. Uh, it was like something crazy like that of Pepsi. They gave them seventeen decommissioned submarines and three decommissioned warships as payment. <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story, by the way, and um, CEO of Pepsi joked about how they're disarming the Soviet, the communists faster than the than any government has ever done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pepsi, man. Pepsi. Mm. I don't know good Coke, though. Just in general, I don't like I don't like Pepsi. 